together in our welcoming and gathering prayer. Loving God, center us as we worship. Prepare our hearts and help us to make room for what is important. Your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We're going to have an extended meditation moment. First, let us meditate upon the words of the song that I just played for you. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awakening cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. Is this your awakening thought? Let us consider how we wake up in the morning, and if we do so, able to praise God. Lord, receive us as we worship, as we lift up the glorified Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning comes from the faith we sing, number 2103, We Have Come at Christ's Own Bidding. Let us stand to sing. <laughs>
the call to worship? Come to the Mount and see the power of God. We see Jesus in the beauty and power of holiness. Jesus invites you to be transformed by his love. We are not worthy to approach the glory and holiness of God. None are worthy, but Jesus invites us through his act of salvation. We come to be transformed into the ones God calls us to be, to be our best selves. We will strive towards holy living as Christ-like disciples for Jesus. Please be seated. God of revelation, you spoke words of love and revelation from the heavens to the sacred space on the mountaintop. Speak in our space too. Move in us that we may be witnesses to your word and experience life in you with newfound awe and wonder. Just as Peter was moved to action when he saw your glory, so may we be nudged to help build your reign of love. In Christ we pray. Amen. And please join me for the next ten in faith we sing twenty one twenty three. chapter 9, verses 28 through 37. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter 
and John and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice was spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. God. No birth. 
We are constantly in the process of moving forward, shedding the old self and putting on the new self. And this is not just a physical reality, but also a spiritual reality as well. Hopefully we are growing and maturing in wisdom and grace as we age. There is a quote I want to share with you from Richard Rohr. He is an American Franciscan priest. He said this, and I quote, God puts us in a world of passing things where everything changes and nothing remains the same. It helps us appreciate life, that everything is a gift. We didn't create it. We don't deserve it. It will not last, but while we breathe it in, we can enjoy it and know that it is another moment of God, another moment of life. Thus ends his quote. Perhaps that is what this mountaintop experience was all about, embracing the change, embracing the future, trusting in the one who brings change to remain with us through it, trusting the one who calls us and focuses us by saying, this is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. God wants us to be like Jesus. The future of the kingdom of God on earth depends upon how we present and represent Jesus to the world. In the church, we use words like Christ-like. Paul uses the words like-minded. In Philippians 2, Paul says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. In order for this to happen, there would need to be a transformation in us that would change us. Transformed by God for God. Now let's talk a minute about the difference between these two words, transformation and transfiguration. To transfigure means to change so as to glorify or exalt. To transform means to change in condition, nature, or character. To me, there is an important difference. Jesus was transfigured, changed to glorify or exalt. The disciples saw and experienced the glory of God, which transformed them, changed them in condition, nature, or character. And all this happened on the mountaintop. We call encounters with God mountaintop experiences or even epiphanies. There are times when we make and realize our connection with God. We feel excited and alive. It doesn't happen the same for everyone because we are all different. We don't even know how it happens. In fact, we can call it grace because it is an undeserved gift of God. It might be something really spiritual, or it might just be a quiet, intimate thought or conversation. But when it happens to us, we know it is important. There is purpose in the experience. And like Peter, we get ideas. We get excited. We want to hang out and hang on to that moment for as long as we possibly can. All of us can relate to Peter's desire to stay on the mountaintop and build a place to revisit this spectacular experience. He wanted to build a place to remember. Now that was not a foreign concept. In the Old Testament, we read of many times when the people built altars to God to remember what had happened at a given place. If Peter had been allowed to build that place, I would want to visit it, wouldn't you? But God didn't want the place glorified. God wanted his son Jesus glorified. What was to come next was the trip to Jerusalem, the brutality of torture, the cross, and praise be to God, the resurrection. The transfiguration of Jesus is one of those rare moments which challenge us to stretch our concept of reality and consider the spiritual, the un 
seeing world around us. Through our contemplation, our minds want to ask, did this really happen? Events such as the Transfiguration somehow connect us with the mystery of God and who Jesus is. It makes us consider creation, life and death, and eternity as we realize Jesus was fully human and fully divine. How else could he experience both sides of the veil between life and death, between the physical and the spiritual? For the disciples, it was frightening. Scripture says they fell to the ground. Luke tells us Jesus' face changed and even his clothes became dazzling white. The glory of God could not be contained within Jesus' humanity. It cried to be released. For Peter, James, and John, it was a brief glimpse beyond this world, a peek at what lies ahead just outside of our reach. But notice that Jesus didn't linger at that place, but led the disciples back down <clears throat> off the mountain, in spite of Peter's desire to pitch a tent and camp there for a while. There was no time to waste. Jesus led them back into the daily routine of teaching and preaching to see to the mission. You know, the trouble with mountaintop experiences is that we really don't know what to do with them after they happen. Imagine the questions that flowed through the disciples after being with Jesus on that mountaintop. They had seen miracles, but this, this was different. The same Jesus who leads us to those spiritual high places also leads us to action in the valley below, or what we might call back at home. Jesus did not stay on the mountaintop because there was important work for him to do. He came back down where the fears and tears and suffering and pain of the people were taking place. He came back down to save us at the cross. Peter needed the mountaintop. He needed to hear God say, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. We all do. Sometimes we need moments of chastisement when God tells us we must listen to Jesus. The response we have from our mountaintop experiences is to share our story. In this scripture, God points the disciples to Jesus. Is that where our focus lies? Lent is a time to intentionally learn and experience God by seeking to keep our focus on Jesus. To bring ourselves to the mountaintop to encounter Jesus the Christ. Matthew 7, 7 to 8 tells us, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Are we bold enough to seek God for sacred moments? To experience God's transforming power? It is important that we find our way to make a connection with God. We cannot be transformed or changed in any way unless we are connected to the lifeline extended to us by God through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus was transfigured on the mountaintop to finish the work that was appointed to him. He experienced the mountaintop but didn't forget the valley below. We are in the valley. Our world is in a dark valley right now. We live in the trenches of life with the presence of good and evil. For the last two years, we have been overwhelmed with the sickness and death of the pandemic we have struggled with the violence and the chaos in our own country and that of the world. The violence of war that is now present tells us that we are indeed in the valley where God's work needs to be done. 
We can do it because we do not go through this life alone, but rather with the presence of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living in and through us. For the Apostle Paul, his mountaintop experience was on a flat road on the way to Damascus when he had an encounter with the risen Christ. He was called to be transformed into a new person, and as such, he spent the rest of his life spreading the gospel message of Jesus. In order to live through the struggles, the beatings, hardships, and disappointments, he never forgot his transforming moment on that road when he met the risen Jesus. We share our stories of sacred moments to encourage and lift up others in the faith. We know our transformation stories are not for us alone. There's no time to linger on the mountaintop. The transformation of each and every person is needed to fulfill the mission of love. There is trouble in the world. What Jesus said in the world, you will face persecution, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Pain and death no longer has the final word. I want to say that again. Pain and death no longer has the final word. It can be hard, but we must remember that victory in Jesus is in all things. Where there is God, there is hope, and there is peace, and there is grace, and there is love. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is creation, and there is change. And where there is creation and change, there is opportunity for all of us to live together in the kingdom of God. There is work to be done in the valley in every corner of our world. The challenge for us as disciples of Jesus is to discover how will we respond and participate. War and chaos may be present among us, but God is among us, and so we live in spirit and in truth. Fulfilling the vows of our baptism, what then are we to do? Well, first there is a call to pray. God told us to listen to Jesus. That is our lesson from this transfiguration event today. When we come to God in prayer, we not only talk, but we listen. Another way is to offer grace and encouragement, as Moses and Elijah did for Jesus. And the best way is to always and in every way work with God, allowing God to see to the work of transformation. Transformation of hearts, of minds, and of lives. Let us pray for each other. Let us as the people of God pray for the world for the transformation of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, you are the Holy One of Israel. Your greatness is beyond our ability to understand. Your righteousness is so pure that we dare not look upon your face. Remove the veil of sin that covers us, that we might see your glory. Free us from our self-reliance that leads us to go our own way. Forgiving and gracious God, forgive us now that we may approach your holy mountain once more. Fill us with your spirit. Empower us to abide with Jesus in prayer and obedience that we might return from the mountaintop to complete the work you have assigned to us. We would rather bask in the light of the mountaintop with you than walk in the valley, yet it is the valley where your love and grace are most needed. Great physician, heal those who have been wounded by illness, brokenness, and pain. Be with those who are huddled in fear this day because of the chaos around them. Make them and us whole in whatever way fulfills your will for us. 
There is unrest in our world, and we, as your people, cry out for peace. We trust in you, O oh God, to heal our world. Answer the cries of your people for peace, for we cry out in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. This same Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We now come to a time where we want to lift up and rejoice over the gifts of God's people. We have not heard of a specific Encore number yet to give towards this crisis, but if you wish to give to Encore, just put Ukraine in the memo, and I'm sure that uh, Howard will figure it out as to where the monies will go. So let us now sing our doxology as we thank God for the blessings in our lives.